Hey everybody, it's Nick here from Grayscale Gorilla, and in today's video, I wanted to show you how to set up animated gobos in Octane so that you can get detailed shadow animations just like this. Now, if you've been wanting to learn how to set up this effect in your renders, stay tuned. I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step way to do it right inside of Octane. All right, let's head on into Cinema 4D and let's get started. All right, here we are in Cinema 4D and we have this really simple scene set up and I already set up an octane light just to show you the final result. We're gonna build this from scratch in just a second, but I did wanna show you how uh, quickly this animates if you just scrub the timeline. So uh, let's start from scratch here with the light. I'm just gonna turn off this light. And the first thing you need to do to start to set up these animated gobos is to go into your live viewer, go to objects, lights, and click on octane area light. Now, an area light's gonna come in, and the first thing I'm going to do is just raise it up in the scene and move it back in Z space, uh, just so it's not blocking the view here. So I'll go to coordinates, and I'm going to move it way back behind the camera here. And you can see now it's projecting light onto the background. And what we really want it to do is project one of these gobos onto the background. So the next thing we need to do is go into the light, go to details, and make it really teeny tiny so that these shadows are really hard. Uh, so the first thing we'll do is go to X and set it to one. Let's go to Y and also set it to one. And you can see uh, it got really dark. So uh, next thing we'll do is click on this light tag over here in the octane light, go to surface brightness and click on it. All right, now it is a bright light. It's projecting onto the back. And now all we need to do is tell this light what to project. So this is where we're gonna to start to set up the gobo. Go to distribution, click on this little triangle right here, and when it pops up, it, you're gonna see this uh, menu here, C4D Octane, then click on image texture. And the reason we do this is it's gonna give us some more control once we put a gobo in here. Um, there's a few more steps here. The next thing we need to do is tell uh, the shader what animated gobo we want to use here. Now you can put a still gobo here, in fact, uh, we shipped some uh, still gobos here in Grayscale Gorilla Plus a few months back. And of course, the number one question we got was, we want some animated ones. So that's what I'm here showing you today are the animated gobos. We have a whole bunch of them here, some of our favorites that we animated, including trees, caustics, and these windows with trees waving on the outside. So let's start with this uh, animated trees here. And we just drag it into the file and you're gonna see it's there, but it's uh, kind of um, not bright enough from the start. In fact, let's just grab the caustic so we could see it a little bit better at first so we could set it up. And then we'll start to try out these other ones. But you could see this caustic light is just not bright enough. So let's go into our light tag and crank up the power. Now I'm using ACES workflow. So you may have to crank it a lot if you're using ACES, you just need a lot of light energy bouncing around but crank it up till you see a really bright streak back there. And you can see the next thing we need to do is uh, br um, shrink it down and then make it animate. So by default, it's just gonna work just like a still gobo. You can see it's not animating. So let's set that up first. Uh, let's shrink it down and then we'll set up animation. So to shrink it down, remember we set up this image texture. Let's go into the image texture. Down here, you're gonna see two buttons that we're gonna click. First one is projection. Let's click the projection and then um, when we open up this triangle and scroll down, you're gonna see mesh UV, change that to perspective. Already it's looking better, it's a little bit smaller. And to be able to adjust the scale, the next thing you wanna do is click on UV transform and open this up. Uh, once you're in here, you could use this slider to scale up and down uh, the entire gobo. And because it's tileable and loopable, you could set this at any scale, but I'm gonna set it somewhere around here. And uh, the next thing we need to do is make it animatable. So if we go up back up to our file here, you can see we have a tab here called animation. Click on animation and let's set our mode to loop so that if you have an animation longer than 179 frames, it'll just loop back around. These are fully loopable and also seamless for you. Uh, and then the next thing we do is just click calculate. And you can see it looked in, uh, as at how many frames there were in the animation and it calculated 179. This is true with all of our animated gobos. They're fully loopable and um, uh, all set up ready for looping and, and uh, tiling as well. 
So you can see now we have these beautiful caustics going across the back here. And uh, in fact, if you wanted to change uh, the, the gobo, just go back into your image texture, go to shader and drag in any other one of these into the file. And then you may have to readjust it and also scale it. So what's really great is uh, it also works with HDRI links. So if you find yourself wanting to try out a bunch of these, uh, including stills and all that stuff, uh, all you have to do is go into the image texture and under file, just drag file into drop zone. Now drop zone's a plugin here from Grayscale Gorilla that automatically knows what you're dropping into it and set up, uh, sets up HDRI link and signal and a bunch of stuff. We have training about this as well. So once you do that, um, all you have to do now is select your HDRI link tag and click any one of these gobos and it will automatically be set up on your scene, including these awesome windows here. Okay, so speaking of uh, the windows, the they look okay, but they're kind of going in straight. Remember the first thing we did was drag our octane light beh straight behind us and you pretty rarely want a projector look like this, unless you're literally going for a projector look, you may, you probably want this more off to the side, like the one that we started with like this, just gives it a lot more natural look. So let me show you how to quickly set that up. Now you could move your light and try to orient it and aim it at your scene. But what I've been doing is adding a null to my scene right in the middle uh, where I want it to um, project onto, and then making the octane light a child of the null. Now you could zero this out and kind of center it, but you could be pretty rough with it as well. Just grab the null, go to your coordinates, and now you could literally just rotate around and you could see uh, the window moves around with it. You're basically moving that light behind the camera over to the side. And then if you uh, adjust the, uh, the pitch here, you, you can actually aim it down and give it that more natural off to the side um, look. So let's get it roughly where we want it. And then we're probably gonna do a little bit more tweaking to move it into position. We just need to center it. So let's grab our octane light itself and we can now adjust the heading and the um, pitch to just center it on the scene. I just want that window right in the middle. And okay, there we go. And now uh, when we choose different gobos, it should be centered pretty roughly there on the scene. And they all are set up, ready to animate, and if you wanna try another one, because we have HDRI link set up, you just click it and you're all set up with different ones. All right, let's click on this tree one, which is one of my favorites, and let's scroll through and see we're all set up and ready to go. And uh, you should be all set. This is um, a few steps to get here in Octane, but once you have it set up and you have HDRI link set up, you can actually save this light um, as a scene file and just use it whenever you need to as well. Uh, don't forget, if you make something beautiful with this, we love to see it, and we hope you love animated gobos as much as we've loved making them and playing around with them. Thanks again for watching, everybody. And don't forget, if you're a Grayscale Gorilla Plus member, you have everything you saw in that video, including the brand new animated gobos. And if you're not a member, definitely check the link down below and learn about the ultimate Cinema 4D toolbox that we've created to help you make better renders in less time. And with that, I hope to see you in another video really soon. Bye everybody.